Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. What else? Another movie review in the month of October. And this time, since this movie is going to be celebrating its 30th anniversary, I'm going to be reviewing Night of the Living Dead, the modern 1990 horror remake from special effects wizard director Tom Savini that's based on the original horror classic by George A. Romero who also co-wrote with John A. Russell the story about a young woman who joins with his brother to, to attend at a funeral for the death of their mother till all of a sudden the zombies had appeared and started attacking them with only one woman being alone trying to find some help and to escape from a plague of zombies and just wants a better local home of a family that's being held inside the cellar to escape from them and a black man had joined in to actually try to find a way to either escape or try to you know, board up the house so, so the zombies won't appear in yeah, just so they can survive we also learned that um, the family's uh, daughter uh, one of who happened to be the victim had been bitten by a zombie and soon she'll become one so you know the story now the main this is part of the four movie frills and chills collection volume four yes it's joining in with resident evil apocalypse which i do have on dvd the special edition i would say it's the best sequel of the series in my opinion it's also joined with the devil's tomb and zombie strippers yeah but I only got this just for Night of the Living Dead I got it at Dollar Tree for only a dollar and this is probably the only collection I could find <laughs> but what else can you do <laughs> anyway but back to the story the main reason why it got remade was because Romero had said that um, it was going through issues over profits from his original film uh, so he actually had a court battle over the rights of the original because the copyright notice was not included it's been under public domain for decades which is losing way over profit and his production company Image 10 you know, before Laurel, you know, with uh, Richard B. Rubenstein, um, they won the lawsuit against that. But the distributor went out of business. A studio called Continental Releasing, which Columbia Pictures um, eventually uh, bought the rights. That explains why they were they they were given a domestic uh, release. Um, especially overseas, I believe, uh, through uh, Menachem Golan's production company, 21st Century Film Corporation, not to be confused with 20th Century Fox, that Romero had to contact him to be interested in it, with him reprising with uh, Russell and Streiner to collaborate for the first time in 20 years. And that's when Tom Savini was being hired by Romero not only to to do the special effects with his team but also to direct um, and the main reason why he was drawn to it because he couldn't do the special effects of, on the original film so he'd have someone else do it now Tom Savini has been known for doing all the special effects in several movies and TV shows out there. Yeah, I mean, he also directed Tales from the Dark Side episodes. That at that point on, he was hoping that because of this um, time period, where everyone was very, pretty much interested in watching horror movies with excessive blood and gore. But because of the MPA rating system at the time, the X rating was already becoming the NC-17 rating they were afraid that nobody will be able to attend to see this film it will mostly just be adults that's the main reason well, they had to cut it down for all the, the gore scenes here and there which can only be available in the work print version that's, that's online if you can find it somewhere 
I was lucky to find it online and actually burn a copy myself so I'd be able to see it even with some of the deleted footages that were included too so they had some several deleted scenes and plus it was a lot shorter compared to the um, the theatrical cut as we've seen here um, it was also told that Savini was having some hard times you know having to deal with uh, the producers you know they've been pressuring him with all the changes that they had to go through and plus when Romero who had to be on set at times because they shot this movie in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania the same place that shot the original that if he wasn't around then they're not giving him a chance to use his original vision and it's claiming that his vision was only 40 percent of the film at the time so, that's a shame um, and also because um, they want to make the, the effects more realistic as possible that's based upon autopsies forensic pathologies Nazi death camp footages and all uh, with you know adding all the special effects to all the extras and the actors around and they look exactly as we picture them and they were also afraid to to remake this because someone else might be able to take a chance um, that's another reason too and they also were afraid because well they were hoping that they weren't going to ruin the source material of the original in the first place and by the way it was actually called um, Night of the Flesh Eaters before they had to change the title to Living Dead and going back to the original which I know at the time when the MPA raid system came along adding some new rating systems and Roger Ebert you know, film critic of the Chicago Sun-Times who of course would be the writer of, of the Russ Meyer films <laughs> the figure um, he actually attended at a screening uh, joining in with the kids so they'd be able to see it for themselves since they've seen horror films before maybe on TV and, and they actually wanted to experience it themselves and yeah some of them were actually in shock or some of them were just either cried or whatever I mean, probably the first time they ever see something that they never saw before. So that's cool. But it's the movie that started the the revolution of the zombie apocalypse genre that spawned off a series that Romero has been doing for decades, uh, starting with Dawn of the Dead, then there was Day of the Dead, and then we had uh, Land of the Dead, Survival of the Dead, Diary of the Dead, um, you name it. And then we had all these remakes to follow. I mean, even after this first remake that I'm, that I'm about to review today. Um, to me, I, I thought um, this was severely underrated because this time you got a cast who actually approve upon. Um, they had some several changes they had to do, but even though they maintained the same story with being in color and all, and brighter yet darker at times you know they they did exactly what they could on the screen you know with all the zombies appearing at night and they're trying to trying to survive through and trying to find a way to escape from this madness anyway <laughs> okay it did have a blu-ray release um, twilight time which is now as a brand just went kaput it just absorbed into um, screen archives you know after the original founder had passed away I, I never bought it with Twilight Time but it would be nice to find some titles from them because I know I, I hate their limited editions units that they've been putting out on all their films that they've taken you know going for three thousand or sometimes five thousand it's just ridiculous and I heard it wasn't a great release anyway, yeah, and I judge from that too, because I saw an HD print that has color grading, and it looked terrible. Well, the, the transfer didn't look too bad, though, because judging by it, it, it did have the clarity, and it, it would actually look even better than the previous DVD that I have right here. However, though, without the color grading, I think, yeah, the film would have been exactly a lot cleaner and... and more precise 
So that's probably what ruined it. Cause I, I couldn't. It just makes the film look flat. It tries to become more murkyish, but they failed at that. Don't bother. Um, they didn't even put uh, all the special features, other than just the commentary and the isolated score. So, yeah, what's the point? So then there's um, the Umbrella Entertainment release from Australia, and they also joined in with the original to be released as special editions. And of course, I mean, it's great that now they have to be in part because over the years, you know, after this remake, I mean, Night of the Living Dead finally got an audience from everyone, you know, being on public domain home videos, and I know they've been colorized when they were on TV, and then they had to um, end up giving special editions to other studios, and that's now, and we now have a, a Criterion Collection release, along with the Mill Creek release, <laughs> So now we're getting it, the attention it deserves. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I know I'm just talking fast. But we did also have a Sony release uh, that came out as a manufacturer on demand. Yeah, you can get it online if you haven't got those releases, so you might have a chance. Maybe I might get it someday, hopefully, but for now, I'm glad I got the DVD for just a buck. Yeah, I'm being a cheapskate, but what can you do? <laughs> Anyway, let, let's begin with the review of the remake. It stars Tony Todd, who you may remember him later on in the Candyman series. Yeah, because he played the title role. I know there's going to be a new movie uh, that's coming out uh, sometime later this year. It's a reboot, uh, or just, or might as well just be a follow-up. Could be just a sequel. I mean, you never know. Um, it's going to be produced by Jordan Peele. So I, I love to check that out. Um, but he was also in the Final Destination films, The Crow, yeah, the original Crow, among other stuff. Patricia Tolman, who's a stunt woman, but she's a great actress. She was in uh, Star Trek, Babylon 5, among others. Uh, he was also, she was also a, a former CEO and executive producer of a production company called Studio GMS. I believe produced several films. Tom uh, Toles, um, who you may remember him as Otis in Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, the film that started uh, the career of Michael Rooker. And I know he passed away a long time ago, but he's a great actor. He's been notorious for playing villainous roles. McKee Anderson, William Butler, Kate uh, Finneran, Bill Mosley, as you may know, he made his screen debut with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 as uh, <laughs> Chop Top, but he went on to do films like House of the Thousand Corpse, yeah, Rob Zombie movie, Repo, the Generic Opera, and The Devil's Rejects, yeah, which was, of course, um, and, uh, and many others that he's been doing. Uh, Heather uh, Masur and Russell Streiner, of course, was in the original um, Night of the Living Dead, who played Johnny. <laughs> it's written by George A. Romero, a horror master himself, which I know he passed away, but he'll always be a legend. Yeah, he wrote this, the story based upon his original, and it's directed by Tom Savini, who, of course not only has done the special effects work and everything, but he's also an actor too. I mean, he appeared in in uh, movies like Machete and From Dusk Till Dawn, Desperado, yeah, from Robert Regas. So he really admires him. Great. The movie began set in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. We meet our siblings, Barbara and Johnny, both played by Patricia Tolman and Bill Mosley. They're about to visit their mother's grave somewhere in a remote cemetery. But Johnny continues to go around scaring Barbara to death with all these zombie antics and mocking the fact that their mother can be one of them. Next thing you know, they bit, they notice an old man was with a bite was walking by, thinking that this might be the zombie, but in reality he was just scared, witless until the zombie appears attacking Johnny and wants to um, 
with Barbara trying to take the, the flowers and, and try to stab the zombie, but then he accidentally stabs Johnny. And then next thing you know, the zombie actually takes Johnny and hits him directly into the tombstone. And he was dead. And now, Barbara was all alone. She tries to get away from the two zombies that are appearing, including the one that was had his uh, his whole uh, suit uh, all torn at the back, so he's all naked, and it was ready to attack uh, Barbara along with this the zombie that was has a disfigured face. Um, when the Barbara just went straight into the car, she, there was no keys in the addiction, so now she had to use the brake that she had to pull, and then she had to go all the way back and it just crashes into a tree, then she had to escape as soon as possible um, trying to find a place somewhere to, so she could survive and she did. Now, um, all of a sudden uh, already with, with a bunch of zombies appearing and then another pack of them are going to come out even at night shortly after a black man named Ben who's played by Tony Todd at Arrives and the two had to clear the house of the dead and begin the process. They're barricading the doors and windows. You know, they had to take all the, the doors around and, and start to block them. Only to discover that there are survivors hidden underneath, hidden all the way down into the cellar of the house. And that's where we meet uh, the Cooper family. Uh, joining in with Harry Cooper, who's played by Tom Tallis, who's a very selfish, arrogant, and argumentative husband, joined by his wife, Helen, played by McKee uh, Anderson. Um, also, their daughter, Sarah, who happened to be bitten by the zombie, and she's played by Heather Masur, and has since been fallen seriously ill. We also joined the teenage lovers, uh, Tom Bidner and Judy Rose Larson, and they're both played by William Butler and Katie Veneran. So the group had divided over what their next course of action should be, but Harry believes everyone should retreat to the cellar and barricade to the door you know, so they can wait for the authorities to arrive. But Ben basically thinks that this is a death trap, so they tried to find a better way to actually provide the house all the way which also has an alternate escape route but Barbara suggested that the group should actually leave the house on foot after she knows that the zombies uh, limited mobility meaning that yes they're walking pretty slowly so they can pass right through them uh, they were hoping that maybe they'll be able to grab uh, the gas pump uh, key so that way they can go straight to the gas station as soon as possible. They have to take the truck or anything else. They also have guns that they have to pick. So that way they'll be able to shoot all these zombies in their heads or any or any location so they'll die. Enough so they don't end up getting attacked by them one by the other. Now Barbara on the other hand was already being shocked and, and stunned by the whole zombies around that yeah, there was actually one zombie that fell on her. Yeah, the big one, <laughs> the tall one. And then she had to kill that one with, with a hook. And I know there's even a scene where Ben actually killed one zombie with this one hook. And, he, and he's going around yelling, Damn you! Damn you all! And I almost felt like this could have been almost... Uh, when he, when we see Tony Todd with a hook, I'm thinking this could be the earlier performance of Candyman right there, in a way. Um, now, of course, you probably will realize um, the changes in Barbara's character because she started out very frightening and scared, but deep down of it, she's like, she actually starts changing. She started to lose her sanity, thinking because you know. Already with uh, with Harry and Ben already arguing with each other. I mean, Harry's being an asshole, of course. Um, telling him that, you know, there's no other way 
to escape it, so you have to be safe in the cellar. You, you know, we have to try to find ways to stop. Of course, Harry refused to help uh, Ben join in with, uh, with Tom, because they had to go around trying to find some bunch of lumber so they can block the, the windows and all. And also because uh, they had to turn on the TV set to find out some of the 40s, you know, hoping they'll appear. I mean, you saw the emergency broadcast system, and then later on, when the Harry had came upstairs, well, already because the zombie's been covered you know, by Ben, that's when um, he, he actually found the TV already left on, and that's where he hears a news report happening. So he was hoping he was going to take the TV set all the way downstairs, so that way everyone could watch it, so that they could listen to the stories about what's happening. But then Ben suddenly goes after Harry and and he wants to accidentally drop in the TV set and down to the cellar. But that was by accident. He, he was telling him that, no, I was just going to take the TV downstairs so uh, into the living room so that way we could watch it. But all this argument and everything. Um, therefore, with all the other zombies appearing and they kept killing them, one by one, they're trying to find a way to um, get to the truck to, so they can escape, so they have to go straight to the gas station, but they have to take the gas key for the gas pump so they can turn on and be able to fill, pump in some gas. So only um, Tom, Judy, and Ben had to take the truck as soon as possible, while, um, while Barbara had to stay in, you know, along with uh, Harry and, and all to to try to continue uh, shooting all these uh, these zombies and I know they're trying to find a way to escape and hoping they were going to come back so that way they'll they'll be able to arrive you know, before they end up getting attacked but by accident they found out that the keys that they took from this one zombie that they just shot um, it was the person who actually uh, runs the, the gas station. They took the wrong keys. And then suddenly uh, Tom accidentally shot the, the, the piece, hoping that maybe they'll be able to get the gas. But they should have realized that because Ben, which they left him behind accidentally, and left him with, with the fire stick that he has, you know, trying to burn all the other zombies around and tried to escape from all of them, that's a whole crowd of them. They accidentally shot it, and then all of a sudden, the entire truck and the gas station had exploded. And they're all dead, both for Tom and Judy. And all the zombies were later started eating their flesh while they were already you know, burned to a crisp. Helen has been bitten by uh, Sarah, now that uh, she was awakened as a zombie, and now um, Sarah had finally came out of the cellar and, and wants up uh, going to attack you know, Barbara, and also Ben and, and even the Harry, but then Harry was afraid to, to shoot Sarah because after all it's his daughter, but Harry just wouldn't listen, so Ben just decided to shoot her anyway. Ben started to shoot her anyway, but then that's what led to this fight where between Ben and, and Harry, so they end up shooting each other. Ben got shot pretty badly. Um, same goes with Harry. Well, maybe only shot a little bit here. And he wants up going all the way upstairs all alone. Well, Barbara, on the other hand, had to had to leave as soon as possible as Ben told him to while Ben is just all alone going all the way down into the cellar and then he found out while he was listening to the radio that he found about the authorities that he actually found the gas pump key that was hidden the whole time it's all because of Harry you know because he's being so rude and stubborn and selfish you know he had he had to lock himself in the cellar and do exactly what he wants his family to be in with Helen and, and Sarah. 
and Helen was trying to tell uh, the Harry to just just open the, the cellar and, and just get out of there and, and just let him help, but he just refuses. So, yeah. Anyway, so already Barbara is on his own. So already Barbara is on her own. Um, she just shot uh, a zombie lady just holding a dowel. And then she had to escape as soon as she can. She found a truck. All of a sudden, a bunch of uh, rednecks had appeared. And that's where they're ready to have a party by the next morning because she, she actually joins in with the group. Um, the next morning, she woke up um, inside a Jeep. Um, she's actually wearing some clothes that she got because I know she did wear some jeans earlier, but you know, replacing her dress and she had the gun and, and all, and then now she's all dressed up to prepare for some more pack of zombies. Now they turned this entire area into like basically <laughs> a local fair. So that that means we get to see a bunch of gains of our rednecks, you know, just you know using two of the zombies as as like a boxing match, you know, so they could bet their games and then they're going around, you know, hanging half of the, the free zombies um, on the tree and just going around, you know, shooting them and using them as a game and, and all. And then they finally went straight into the house and that's where they found Ben, who's now a zombie, and they shot him. Meanwhile, Henry still alive well Barbara decided to just shoot him in the head he deserved it after what he did to Ben so pretending like you know <laughs> he was already the zombie but he's not so, thank God for that and then the movie pretty much ends just having to see uh, Barbara watching all the bodies being burned on the pry with everyone so. So, to me, this was definitely well made as a remake, and I can see why, you know, it has divided some audience here. You know, there are people who hate it, and then there are people who love it. And they, but I definitely think they def, but I thought they respect the, the source material that they had to choose. And I thought Savini did an excellent job directing it, even though he was having hard times with it. And it, it definitely goes to show you here. Uh, Tony Todd was excellent in his role of Ben, and no doubt about it, I, I thought he really nailed the performance that he ever did, you know, compared to the original actor who played the role. Patricia Tolman, on the other hand, I mean, she was just awesome. In fact, I like the fact that this Barbara in this version, where she started out, you know, almost a little bit like a screen cream type I mean of course you know she's frightened she's scared she screams a lot um, through the beginning and maybe towards um, the end of the movie but deep down of it you could tell that she's already changing to become a strong tough female and I love that too because that's how she lost her sanity when she had to shoot that uh, zombie and having to deal with all the, the yelling and screaming from everyone. Barbara aims to shoot at the zombie and then this is where Judy says, Don't shoot! It's Mr. McGruber from the Legion Hall! And then by the time he was killed, <laughs> Judy says, You shot Mr. McGruber! You shot him! And then Barbara says, Look at his back! I didn't do that! And then when another zombie appears, she starts shooting at the chest of of this bald black guy until he finally shot him in the face or the head and she goes around saying is he dead? is he dead? is he dead? and Ben says you're losing it girl you're losing it and then Barbara says you think so? whatever I lost I lost a long time ago and I do not plan on losing everything else you can talk to me about losing it when you stop screaming at each other like a bunch of two-year-olds <laughs> Just awesome right there. Because having to deal with these zombies though, you can tell by her reaction that yeah, she does scream. 
but she does also laugh as in she was horrified having to, to kill the zombies. She was incredibly frightening, but at the same time, she felt good about it. Like she's trying to let everything all out. So, amazing. This is a terrific performance from her. Tom to less, on the other hand, um, well, just like in the original, yes, the character Harry is an asshole. He hated this character so much because of the way he acted. But at times, I think he's, you know, he should have known better about this. And I, I understand because he had to throw some fits. He's trying to protect um, his wife and and her daughter, and I understand because he's afraid too. That's why he wants to stay in the cellar just for protection. But Ben just wanted to come up with his own ways to uh, barricade the doors and, and windows and everything. But he felt that it was a bad idea. And that's probably the, the main reason why they started arguing with each other. Yeah, so he doesn't seem to care. Um, but the rest of the cast were great. Um, they did the portrayals exactly on target. Um, the special makeup effects that they used for the zombies, they brought in a lot of extras to join in. Um, they were incredibly scary the way they are portrayed. And they did do their own stunts, too, which I, I really did appreciate that, too. There's even moments when you see some of the zombies, even the ones that were naked and and the ones with clothes on. Um, there's even one zombie where it actually wants up taking um, a mice and started eating it, so almost trying to share it with the, the other zombie, or when the zombies started to eat the flesh of another um, zombie and all. Yeah, because there's also the hand that's been cut out, and there's all, all these other ones. I mean, amazing. Um, I would say I think Patricia Tolman definitely did some of her own studs too uh, with some of those scenes and I mentioned already with the tall a zombie that fell all the way down which I know he did his own stunt and then all these other and having to try to survive through this particular apocalypse this madness that's happening throughout the entire Pittsburgh and everything that was going on and the special effects um, were, were well done. I mean, there's some blood in the movie, but it kind of seemed pretty tame, mostly because of the changes of the MPA rating system at all. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought this was a very simple, well done remake that Tom Sabini had a hard time doing. I mean, you got to give him credit for that because he really wanted to do his best to respect the original material that George A. Romero writing with his partner um, uh, of course Johnny Russell but of course he only wrote the entire story himself and just keep it exactly in the right pace you know not not trying to disrespect the original source you know not to disrespect everybody's uh, or any other but I'll say this though, it's better than the, the other horror remake that came out eight years ago as this, that was also in color, but it was shot by shot, and that is of course Psycho. <laughs> Terrible remake by the way. You'd just be better off just sticking to the original. Uh, but therefore though, I love both the original and the remake, and if it wasn't for this though, I would say that the remake of Dawn of the Dead that follows in 2004 with Zack Snyder um, would have got the attention that it was given. But I was amazed how that one got more attention than this one did, sadly. Um, but I love the cinematography though. It did give it um, a brighter at, well, at the beginning, but then it gets it a darker feel at the end. And when it hits at night, you can see the moon as it moves around. Like you can tell, like you can see the the normal moon that's all full moon, 
and bright right, but then later it, it changes to like almost a blood moon too. And um, the music, of course, was done by Paul uh, Bacolog. Yeah, I love the, the score that they chose for this. Um, even at the end of the film, you can see like a montage that's all in the, uh, an orange tint color. So you can see like a bunch of montages of everyone, you know, battling all the zombies and all. That was what, that you saw at the end credits. It's really cool. Um, all in all, though, um, this is another reason why you should check this out. I mean, if you love the original film, I don't see why not that you should appreciate the remake. I mean, I, I've seen this movie on TV as a kid. I probably saw it on home video too. I know I have. And it's great that I have it on DVD now. I just hope that someday I'll, I'll track down the Blu-ray so I can watch it in high definition. So. So. But anyway, that's Night of the Living Dead, the 1990 remake. And I give the movie four and a half stars because you know there is one issue I did have but that's okay I still think it's um, yeah I think it's mostly because of uh, the character uh, Harry but I mean yeah because he did got on my nerves <laughs> but other than that though um, it's closer to being a strong remake as possible and it's better than most of the modern Four remakes that we get in recent years, um, except maybe a few. Anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabara, and I'll see you later. Bye.